Hi, how are you doing? My name is Matt, coming to you from Brooklyn, New York, and today we're going to talk about a lovely technique in Touch Designer that I call Texture Glitch. Here I have it also being audio reactive. Let me show you how it looks, and then we can get into how you can do it yourself. And go. Oh. So we have lo the lovely music of Dorian Concept. And basically what you can see is happening. Let me just turn off the audio so we don't have to listen to that. Um, what's happening is we have a few different videos and this can be any top texture. Um, and we're basically layering them on top of each other. And um, we're doing some tricks with the time machine and doing some cool things with displaces and ramps. And it's, it's really great technique. Um, and you can also basically use any input as the displacer also, which I will can show you here. If I go here, now you can see I have um, these eyes, which are basically be displacing the texture behind it. And then also just uh, some nice circles that I got from some ramps. I think it's fun. I think you'll enjoy it also. Let's see how we can do it. So I, I'm going to come out of here. I'm going to turn off cooking on this container. And I have this new container just ready here. It should have everything. Let me get rid of everything in here. I'm going to come out, uncook this. And we have this on 1280 by 720. Great. Looking good. So I'm going to start off. And I'm just going to drop in one movie file in. I am going to choose something from my videos and let me throw in a thing of some cars moving and let's make sure that we set this video to be the parent panel size always especially with this technique it's very important that the tops that are going into the network always have the same resolution so i'm going to throw this into a switch Nice, and I'm going to throw this switch into a null. Then we're going to create a simple time machine network by going into this time machine. Put it, um, you, want, you want your texture 3D before the time machine. And I'm not going to go too much into the specifics of how time machine works. It's a really great technique, and there's some really cool vi YouTube videos that can go deep into what you can do with it and some cool techniques with it. I personally learned from this guy, Noons IMG, who does re really fun, like three to five minute touch designer tutorials, which is nice. So you can just like get a lot of information really quickly. Um, so definitely I'll put that link in the description below if you want to learn more about the time machine and um, let's keep going. So I'm going to throw a noise into the time machine and i want to make sure that my noise has the right parent panel size so we go over here and throw this into a null and throw that into and out and we should have the basics of our network and you can see we have a simple time machine it's sort of getting displaced and distorted by the noise i can you know play around with this as we expect I'm going to give it a little bit of motion on and rotate it on the Z axis times two. That looks nice. And what I'm going to do is this technique that I also went over in my other video where I'm going to put a limit in front of the noise and I'm going to turn on the quantize, set the quantize position, and now. It's hard to see because we only have one video, but basically the time machine is um, being distorted by this sort of pixelated background that we have. And that looked nice. So what I'm gonna do right now, which is very important, is go to your texture 3D and set your cache size, I mean, your step size to four. This texture 3D is going to really allow you to play around with things and get a different different looks and things um, you can see already change changing that really started to 
play with the cache size a lot and it's looking pretty nice already. But what can happen is when I drop in some more movies, and I'm not gonna lie, I only have this directory with all my videos in preparation for this video. It took me too long to get this ready. Um, and let me go some more. I love using this Windows background. It just makes everything look good. And one more. And we need the eye, of course. Um, I'm going to throw all these into a switch. And now, if I start changing the index of this, I'm going to start getting them overlapping because our, our cache is really big for our texture 3D. And so now what I want to do is basically create a little chop network that will just sort of count up through here. Um, and the way that I like to do that, I know there's a lot of ways to do this, is to bring in a pulse. I'm going to throw this pulse into a count. And I'm going to set this loop min max. And instead of setting this manually, what I'm going to do is bring in a constant. And I'm going to set this constant to be num videos. And we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we want to set this to to well we have we have six and so we want to do is have this go to num videos and we want to do num videos minus one so that it will loop between all of them and now if i go to this switch i can put this into null set this to viewer active and it should start going between all of our videos. Beautiful. I can play with the speed of this by bringing the number of pulses down a little bit. Very nice. And we are getting pretty close to um, the, the basic technique. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is basically in the other video I showed you, it's not just these squares. You're able to get some other interesting patterns. What the way I did that was adding a little displace network. And so I'm going to throw in a displace over here. I'm going to now, I'm going to throw in a ramp. And you want to make sure that the ramp is set to the parent panel size. And in order to get rid of these weird triangles, what I want you to do is go to pixel format and set this to be a 32-bit float RGB. And this is looking pretty cool. Um, I kind of like this look where it's a little bit more um, parallel to things. So I'm going to change the displace weight of the Y. And now, with by setting all the displace on the the here, we have this effect where it's getting displaced kind of in the middle. And if I can just play around with things in my ramp until I get what I like. And this is really up to you to do what looks interesting. Um, get some green. Some play with the period size. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's nice. Um, that's okay. That's that's what I'm looking for. That's cool. You got sort of pixelation on one side, and then a lot of the grid on the other. And you now you can play around with this however you want. There's a lot of different things you can do. I could change the displace, um, the displace weight of this again, and get this a little bit of an angle, but again, I like it on, I like it to be on this specific way. So I'm going to keep it like here. Okay. And one more thing that I like doing 
just to give it a little bit more of some depth is I'm going to put a transform here and I'm going to scale, set, go to tile, set this to hold. Then I'm going to, oh, I wasn't here the whole time. That's sad. Um, so you get, um, I'm new, I'm new to, I'm new to the YouTube world. So, so bear with me. So I'm going to scale this down. And now we have this nice effect. Let's, let's not do too much of that. Yeah, that's nice. And I kind of want it to be not so displaced in this way. So I'm going to go to vertical. Not vertical. Let's go to spring you over to white and bring you over to. Yeah, that's interesting. Bring you over to the black side. And apply it on this. There we go. Okay. That's more like it. So this is looking pretty good. This is looking a lot like the effect that we're looking for. I now want to add a little feedback loop. I am going to throw in a feedback. I'm going to throw in a transform. I'm going to throw in a level. Move this over. Put this into a over. Throw the output of the time machine into the bottom inlet of the over and set the target top of the feedback to be the over. And now if we go to the level and we bring down the opacity, we are getting a little bit of feedback, which I think has a nice effect on this. And now to really top it off, go into your transform and just scale it down a tiny, tiny bit, not too much. But I think this has a, a very psychedelic effect. And this is basically the example that I showed. So, um, and there's a lot you can do now that you're here. So here's a few different variations. Um, we can uh, basically animate the way that the pixels are being limited here. So let me bring in the um, that song from before. Um, let me go up and just copy and paste it from over here. So I'm going to grab these three. I don't want to find it in my downloads. So I have a song here and I do this. I'm going to go to, just to show you where it is, go to your palette and go to tools and you can grab audio analysis. And it really does, does a great job. If you want to really get into the now of, of how to build your own audio analysis deck, check out Electronauts video. But honestly, 90% of the time, I've been able to get really good results just using the built in um, thing from the palette. So I'm going to grab this audio analysis, throw this into a null. And if we listen to this, I like to pick up this. And so I'm going to go and select it. Let's grab the kick detection. Another thing that I only learned not so long ago is actually clicking on these triangles will show you what uh, channels that you want. Um, so I'm going to now get a, another count and another null. Let's go over here. And I'm going to put the select into the count. And we're going between 0 and 5. And what I'm going to do is put a math in between here. And we can go from 0 to 5. And 0 to 1 is perfect. Oh, this isn't the wrong thing. There. What are you doing, buddy? I 
think the song restart. There we go. Cool. So now if I attach this null to the limit, I can go to the position step and set this kick detection to here. And now if we turn the music of the song on, we should have a nice. So I think that's working pretty well. And the last thing that I want to show you is that you can throw really anything into this. Um, I turn the volume down again. You can throw anything you want into this the displace network of our time machine. So what I think works looks really nice is to throw in this eye. So I'm going to create a select top just so we can keep things clean. And I'm also going to throw in a switch here in case I want to um, go between things. I'm going to throw this movie file in as my select and bring this in. And now you can see that we have the eye behind here. And you can get this great displacement of the eye. And that's really that's that's the technique so it's that simple you know we have a pretty small network and there's a lot of different things you can do here you can add some more post processing and displace things or add more feedback or you know we can experiment with how we're, we want to add another ramp we could see what it looks like if we go to this ramp and you know set this to be a circular ramp and you know that looks that's looking pretty cool and you know that looks lovely you know we can animate this and and there we go we blend between these and let's turn the music back on and just take a look at what we what we made Amazing. Well, I hope that was helpful for all of you. And that was some of our touch design or content that you can So stay tuned. If you have any questions, hit me up on Instagram at Live.